Let's take a few minutes to review some of the needles and syringes you'll find in a typical central line kit. To start off, we have the most basic, which is the thin walled introducer needle. So simply a needle through which your guide wire will pass. It often has a slightly hashed tip, which makes it more echogenic on ultrasound. Second, you have a catheter over a needle or angiocath. This is very similar. However, it's used for a somewhat different technique. With this technique, you're going to enter the vessel, then rather than removing your syringe and passing your wire, you're going to advance this catheter into the vessel, just like placing an IV. After you remove the needle, you can leave it in place as a sheath, through which you can pass your guide wire and not have to worry about maintaining it in place. This is an alternate technique you may find easier than stabilizing your needle while you pass your wire. I personally don't prefer it as a primary technique, and most providers I know don't, because it's not the most versatile. The catheter is not really long enough for deeper vessels, such as subclavians and many femorals. However, even if it's not used for your puncture, it's useful to have this device in the kit. You can remove the catheter from the needle and then railroad it over a wire to hold your place in a vessel while you troubleshoot other things. Next, we'll move on to two different small bore needles for infiltrating lidocaine. These are both small, really intended just for infiltration. One is slightly smaller, the other is a little thicker and longer. The reason they give you two is so you can use one just to numb the very surface and then use the other to numb a somewhat deeper tract. But neither is large enough to pass the wire, they're just for infiltration. Next we have a fill needle which is used to draw up lidocaine into a syringe. It's relatively blunt, it's large bore so it easily draws, and often there's a filter in it so if you're drawing from a breakaway ampule you won't get glass shards into it. Finally we have a completely blunt needle called a transducer needle. This is used for a certain technique of confirming intravascular placement, which I rarely make use of. It's really meant to be used with the Rollerson syringe. It can pass down the hole in the back, attached to a line, and used for some form of pressure transduction. For me, not very useful. Moving to our syringes now, we have our most basic. It's a simple 5cc syringe. I would use this for my access attempt by attaching the introducer needle and puncturing the vessel. You see that it's a slip tip, so it can easily be secured to the needle without having to screw on and off. And it's small enough that it's easy to handle. Next we have the aforementioned Rollerson syringe. This is also used for your puncture. However, in this syringe, there's actually a channel that runs down the center, leading up into the plunger to a hole in the back, which has a one-way valve. And the idea here is that you can access your vessel and then actually pass your guide wire down the back end of the plunger without ever having to remove the syringe. Some people may find this easier than having to remove the syringe while maintaining stability of the needle, although that's probably a skill you should learn. However, I think many providers are not very fond of it. Uh, the entire syringe is a little unwieldy, and passing a wire down this makes it quite difficult to have a good feel for what it's doing, whether there's resistance or it's passing freely or even how much of it is in. The one time when I think it might be particularly helpful is if you have to place a line on a patient who you can't lay down or in Trendelenburg, perhaps due to bad CHF or intracranial pressure. If you have to place a line when someone's sitting up, there's a risk of air embolism. And maybe in those patients, it would be valuable to have a technique that allows you to access the vessel and place your wire all without ever opening it to air. Finally, we have a smaller syringe used for lidocaine. You see this one has a lure lock, so it can be screwed on to your fill needle and then your smaller needles, and your needle's not going to slip off as you work. And there you have it.